what I want to do in this video is move into the Renaissance period of history where we're going to start to see some um, different developments in the study of medicine and we're going to have really have a look at a couple of different things that influence that and then in the next video we're going to go into a little bit more detail about the Renaissance and how that has affected uh, medical changes at this time. So one thing about the Renaissance or Renaissance however you want to however you want to call it so just change my color here really what the Renaissance signified was a rediscovery of classical works so we sort of have the classical period of Greece and Rome so the Greco-Roman era and then that moved into what in the in Europe we would call the dark ages the dark ages okay or, or the medieval period and obviously it's contested whether or not these are really dark ages because this was a time of quite uh, enlightened thought okay but at the same time it's generally seen as a as a step backwards from from the sort of classical era and then we have a renaissance we have a rediscovery of these classical works okay and these are not just medical works but uh, Please, people like Plato, Aristotle, we start to see uh, Homer, uh, the the Odyssey, the Iliad, all these different the different um, works of classics that that was lost almost during these dark ages. So, with that being said, we have access to the original writings. So, specifically looking at medicine, we have the access to Galen, Hippocrates, uh, Avenicia, Okay, and we find that, so the, we looked at them in the uh, first few videos because that's where we really started like, our sort of journey through time and uh, that's what um, we see the rediscovery um, at this time here, okay? And we also saw the introduction of science. Now science, as you can probably work out, is very, very crucial for medicine, okay? and. In this Renaissance period, we see uh, books on anatomy and and dissections, and really stressing the importance of these. Okay, these were so these were things that uh, so this was an increased increasing study, increasing increasing scientific study, increasing scientific study, and scientific progress. However. It must be said that whilst we have a, a rediscovery of these classical writings, Galen's ideas specifically were very heavily criticised and very heavily questioned. And rightly so, since Galen wasn't entirely correct on, on everything or even anything. But just the the rediscovering of these classical writings really kick-started a new development in, in, the, in the development of uh, medicine. Okay, And we can also see as we see the influence of older classical period uh, pieces we also start to see the decline in the influence that the church has over medicine okay so the influence of the church went down uh, due to the reformation and this was the change really the the sort of the sort of counter protest almost against the catholic church okay it's very a very complex period of history um if you ever study the reformation we'll be doing videos on that when we get round to it however it was just a time when the catholic church really lost its lost its its prestige and it lost its power as we have thinkers like uh, erasmus and luther and different uh, areas th different things like protestantism really really seeing and developing in its own way okay and this obviously caused religious conflict but what it didn't do was increase the control over medical teaching so religion now at this point had very little control over the teachings of medicine which is objectively probably a good thing since medicine is a, a scientific uh, procedure and religion is something that is what less scientific Okay, oh, let's stop rotating. So there was a number of events that we can start to look at that really, um, really broke the mold in terms of the, in terms of the Renaissance era. Okay, so in fifteen fourteen, Vesalius was born. 
and he was a medical professor at, at Pandua University, okay, and he was he was one of the first people to understand that surgery can be successful with an understanding of anatomy. So an understanding, a a a, a, a learning curve, really. What what why people want to learn and this is what happened here so he just he just uh, decided to perform dissections on criminals highly unethical these days however back in 1514 this was seen as uh, fair dues i guess and this really this really these dissections okay and this understanding of anatomy really um really created this this hub of knowledge for anatomy and for the human body and how using this understanding of the human body people can become much more successful at surgery and other medical procedures and as a result in 1538 he wrote uh, six uh, anatomical pictures and in 1543 he wrote the fabric of the human body two very 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 important works so very important works important works and this sort of development of learning about about the body as a as a tool to uh, to develop medicine was really just the really one one thing that sort of signified the the re, the age of the renaissance okay and what also signified the age of renaissance was the fact that prints could be distributed to britain okay and in the 1470s the first printing press was set up in england so this is before uh, Vesalius was even born, and before he even wrote any of his uh, any of his two works, so prints of this could be distributed worldwide. Okay, and this was especially important as it was able. It meant that the 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 knowledge that he collected can be spread across, especially England. Okay, and British doctors um, would read about Vesalius, and they'd point out the mistakes of Galen. Okay, they would use these works to criticize Galen. Okay, and for example, you could, uh, he, for example, one of the Galen's mistakes was that he showed that there was no holes in the septum of the heart. So this was something that Galen has su had suggested, and this is something that Vesalius had had debunked almost. Okay, and this encouraged others to question Galen. Okay, since Galen at the time, this is a classical thinker, and the 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 works of the classical thinkers were were almost seen as um were almost seen as you know infallible. You couldn't you couldn't question them. You couldn't really um um encourage any sort of discussion on the thought. They were seen as the the most accurate, up to date, modern interpretations. And so, when you have people like Vesalius that come along and dissect human bodies and find little um little holes within within Galen's work or no holes as it as it happens here um, you'll find that the find that that gives others the confidence to sort of to question and to research and to really critically anal analyze Galen's work and that's what effectively leads to the development of medicine so that leads to the development development of medicine the development of anything really And so with this first video on the Renaissance, we've just looked at the, the basics of really what the Renaissance meant and how it really tied into the uh, medical development, the development of medicine. We looked at the influence of the Catholic Church, or should we say the lack of influence due to the referen uh, referendum, uh, Reformation. And then we have a look at one of the most key, the key thinkers, which is Vesalius and his works and how they um, impacted other works like the classical thinkers like Galen.